Good afternoon, James. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, perhaps if we just start off with a quick introduction to yourself um, and your company. Sure. So my name's James Rockwell. I'm head of trading at Record Currency Management. Um, we look after a lot of pension funds, hedging, and also we provide currency options for alpha or any currency needs. Uh, you've just come straight off of a rather heated debate, um, uh, not politely dubbed a battle of the platforms, and uh, talking about the, the, the pros and cons of multi-dealer versus single dealer. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, what were your key takeaways? Well, I guess one of the things for us at Record is we trade most of our FX on a spot outright basis, so there's actually a forward date to it. So one of the things that we're worried about is both credit and also that comes into best execution, so not only price. So when it comes to single bank platforms and multi-dealer platforms, that's very relevant to us. Um, the other thing that's very relevant to us is how long it takes to integrate things. And so for us, it makes a lot of sense to do the multi-dealer platforms rather than the single dealer platforms. Well, this is one of the questions. It's to, uh, one of the big questions about single dealer is can you really achieve best execution on a single dealer platform? Well, I think in the FX market, because there isn't an exchange and it's over the counter, you can get a best execution on a single dealer platform. Um, whether it's easier to prove it is, is debatable. With a multi-dealer platform, you can get multiple quotes obviously but you might be getting multiple quotes from poor price sources so it doesn't even at that point mean you're getting the best execution i think the key thing is is when you're analyzing it afterwards that you have the correct data to be able to pinpoint whether you did get the best execution retrospectively rather than necessarily at the time and um we were talking a lot about um liquidity in the market and, and the question between, there's obviously a lot of fragmentation in FX, but also the fact that there may even be too much liquidity, uh, which is uh, in some ways a nice problem to have. But um, the big problem being making sense of it all and, and whether that's actually truly achievable. I think with regards to too much liquidity, it's whether it's been duplicated and doesn't actually exist. So as an example, if you have a bank providing a price in a specific size to a platform, are they providing the same liquidity to a hundred different platforms when it only exists once? So that liquidity doesn't really exist in multiple places. So once it's been taken from one place, it won't appear in the, every other place. So what strategies are you putting in place in order to, to, to sniff out the, the, these, this mirage liquidity? I think from our point of view, we don't use ECM models whereby um, the prices are streamed and you're taking them. We use point-to-point -point or um, request for quote, so whereby we are asking in a specific amount, in a specific date, in a specific currency pair, and they also know that it's record asking for the trade so the liquidity is specific to the trade we're asking for and specific to record. Also uh, going back to, to the, the main topic of um, SDPs and MDPs, are they really competitors? Um, I is, there I th <laughs> is there a battle? I think there are because the banks would prefer you to use their single data platform. Um, obviously they're play paying brokerage if, they, if people trade through the multi-dealer platforms. But not only that, they're able to trust the quote more because they know, one, it's only gone to them, and two, they know the source. Um, there, is, there is also an argument to say that people are using them for different reasons, um, whether it be because they want to show that they're coming from a specific um, buy side or they want to use a specific bank for credit reasons. So. As an example for that, if you'd opened a position with one bank forwards, not spot, if you'd opened it uh, open forwards, you need to potentially close it out with the same bank. Otherwise, you get um, a mark-to-market credit risk at the end rather than the net zero. Um, at record, we tend to use the phone for that. However, the salespeople themselves can use the platforms at their end rather than asking for a price from the human traders. So. By default, we are kind of using the single dealer platforms. Do you think, though, that, that as you said, you're still on the phone? Do you think there's going to be a point where you become fully electronic? Um, not in the foreseeable future. I'd always say never say never, 
but I think the phone is always useful for more unusual crosses and it's also good in bigger sizes and especially when the market becomes particularly liquid. Um, this has happened a few times in the last few years whereby every single price on every single platform goes particularly wide. Um, if you've got a trusted liquidity source that you can phone up, then you tend to get a better price. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us. I, I won't hold you up uh, for, from the, the networking slash lunch session going on behind us. And I uh, look forward to speaking with you later in the conference. Thank you very much.